Good evening, and welcome to another episode of the Defender Fitness Alliance show, where we interview our nation's defenders each and every week. Uh, before we get started, I wanted to let you guys know about the Defender Fitness Alliance group. If you guys know of any military veterans or first responders or law enforcement officers in the health and fitness business, please have them come join the group and um, be part of the alliance. All right, so with that being said, I want to introduce our guest for this week. Um, our guest for this week is an Army veteran, and he is also the president and founder of Make a Vet Sweat. I want to introduce Justin Bowflex Bohannon. Justin, yeah. uh, first and foremost, thank you for uh, thanks for coming on, brother. And um, could you tell us a little bit about your service and what you're up to now? For sure. Uh, thank you for inviting me. And uh, thank you for allowing me to talk a little bit about what I do to your following and your network, man. Um, so, yeah. Um, <laughs> my bad. What was the question? <laughs> uh, just tell us a little bit about your service and what you're up to now. Yeah. So uh, I served 10 years in the Army. Six of those years was uh, with the 11 Bravo. I was at 101st. I was a uh, airborne infantry. Um, actually, at 101st uh, in, Air in uh, Fort Campbell, Kentucky, that's air assault. So we, uh, even though we're considered airborne, we we're an air assault unit. Um, I was a part of the Rockassons uh, at that unit. I served six years with the infantry, deployed two times uh, to Iraq. And then right before going to Afghanistan, uh, they pulled me as well as a lot of other NCOs to be recruiters. So I did six years um, as, a, as an infantry grunt three years as an army recruiter and about one year as a army national guard drill, drill instructor for the infantry. Um, and since being out, I've been out now for five years. And since being out, I have created a nonprofit called make a vet sweat. I have created a charity event, which is a bodybuilding fundraiser, uh, which we have coming up here in about 10 weeks. Uh, and I have, uh, and I'm also a part of the IFBB bodybuilding federation as a promoter and as a, uh, a now a chairman. So kind of, kind of everywhere in the fitness industry. Awesome, brother. Uh, first off, I want to thank you for your service, uh, for your time in, um, can you tell me a little bit about maybe your biggest takeaway from your time in the army? And what would your message be to those that are still serving now? Yeah, you know, one of the biggest takeaways from being in, a, in the Army, and I still live with it today, is always go the hard route. Uh, when I was a part of the Rockassons and we were in Iraq, I always felt like, and I never understood it while I was there, but I always felt like, I'm like, man, the easiest shot is to go A to B. But for whatever reason, at my unit, we always go the long way around to get to B, right? It's like we actually start at A, but we go backwards. So we go A, Z, Y, X, w. like we go all the way the opposite direction to get to B. And why that's one of my biggest takeaways is we were so successful because the hardest road is oftentimes the least traveled. So when I look at the things that I'm doing in my life, I oftentimes look at what's the easiest route to get there just because it's the easiest route. Is that necessarily the best route? If that's not the best route, then what is the best route? Oftentimes it's going the opposite direction, the direction that everybody else is thinking. I don't want to do all that. I'm going to go to East road, take that long road because what comes around from that long road is a whole lot of opportunity, a whole lot of network, networking uh, opportunity and uh, opportunities to make a positive impact in somebody's life who uh, could possibly come back and help you back out in return. Whereas taking the easy route may be faster, you're gonna lose a lot of opportunity and I call those miss ops. Don't wanna miss a miss op, right? Take advantage of every single opportunity. So. The biggest takeaway from the army was uh, going the hard route oftentimes leads to bigger opportunities and better things. If I was to give advice to anybody uh, serving or looking to serve the military, my advice would be find out 
you know, the, the, the overall thing of why. Why are you trying to serve the military? Is it for college? Is it for opportunities? Uh, is it to serve your country? And, and, you know, like me, I joined right after 9-11. I was willing to die for my country. That's why I chose infantry, because I was willing to put my life on the line to do whatever it took to, uh, to, to serve the country. Uh, but figuring out what your why is and how do you use your why to get you to where you're going to want to get later on in life. The military can be a stepping stone or it can be something you can do for a career. I did only 10 years. So for me, it served as a stepping stone. A lot of people only do three to four years. It serves as a stepping stone. But then equally, a lot of people go 20 years, 25, 30 years. It's more than a stepping stone. It's a career. So for anybody looking to serve, I would say, why are you looking to serve? And then I would have you look at it. Is it going to be a stepping stone or is it going to be a career? Excellent points there, brother. Um, so like you said, uh, just finding out your why, why you're doing this and um, what's what's the reasoning behind it. And then just to go back to your biggest takeaway, just to add on to your point, just basically finding out. Uh, uh, you know, creating your own path of yeah. you know, taking that road that's less traveled. Um, you know, just because people are going in one direction doesn't necessarily mean that, hey, you're meant to go that way. Maybe you're meant to go another way and, you know, do what you, you can do to help out. Yeah, dude. Yeah. You know what I've seen a lot of, you know, just talking about this subject for a second. One thing that I've seen a lot of and I just had this conversation yesterday are people wanting to be entrepreneurs. I'm not sure that entrepreneurship is for everybody. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure that everybody was designed to start, run and operate or grow a business or a nonprofit. I think there are a lot of people in this world that not necessarily should be the point guard. Maybe they should be the shooting guard or the power forward or the center, just playing when it comes to basketball. But 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 meaning not everybody maybe should start a nonprofit or start a business. Sometimes it's finding a business or a nonprofit that you align with and just helping them grow it. Right. That's two different things, but a whole lot of responsibility on one, and a lot of late nights and a lot of a lot of not getting paid for for hours spent doing it. And the other is not necessarily spending all those hours, but helping it grow. Excellent, man. Like, um, I mean, nowadays, entrepreneur is like the cool thing to do, right? It's like yeah. uh, everybody wants to be an entrepreneur, but, you know, once they go into it, it's they find out real quick. It's not what uh, social media is putting out out there to be. Yeah, you're exactly right. I, um when I was getting out of the military and I was talking to another veteran about this, and this is how we talked about this conversation. When I was getting out of the military, there was a big push for veteran entrepreneurship. There was a huge push for it. You saw franchises, so many like franchise businesses saying, Hey, if you're a veteran, you can own a business. Do you remember that? Yeah. Own a business franchise with Papa John's franchise with this car wash company franchise, this title boxing. Franchise this gym, franchise this CrossFit, franchise this. It was so many things that people wanted you to franchise. Um, but then, and I feel like that was a bad marketing scheme because then as the veteran and you're like, yeah, dude, I'm going to get out. I'm going to franchise. And you're like, how, how much does it cost to franchise? You're like, oh, $10,000. I got $10,000. Then it's, well, well $10,000, but we also want $150,000 in equity. And you're like, oh, I don't have that. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I don't have that. I can't do that. So, so that's what I mean. It's, it's, you know, entrepreneurship isn't necessarily for everybody who's going to want to take out that loan or take on that $150,000 or $250,000 responsibility. Maybe it's just improving other people's businesses. So finding out your why, finding out what works for you. And if that's the route that you want to go, is this going to be a career for the military? Or is this a stepping stone for the military? So. Uh, for anybody in uh, looking to join us, bring out why and how it's going to help you out in the future. Excellent point, brother. So uh, before we go into um, you know your nonprofit, your your passion now. Um, oh yeah. Let's let's go back into um, you know your transition out of the uh, the army. 
how was that experience for you? And what's uh, one advice that you can give to those that are trans transitioning out of the uniform? The transition out of the military for me was a rough one. It wasn't easy by any means. I think that I had an idea and I was like, oh yeah, no, it's gonna work out. I was very positive and very optimistic, but I was that guy who did not have $150,000 in equity. So I was that guy who was like, I got to figure out how to make this. Um, lucky for me, so, so lucky for me, I, my brother allowed me to live with him for free for, for X amount of months until I got myself on my feet. Not everybody has been as fortunate or is as fortunate to have the family that I had or the support that I had. Anybody transitioning out of the military, I would say a couple of things. Number one, figure out like like put the numbers down like, you know don't figure out your mind put the numbers down how much money are my everyday expenses every month expenses so how many do i actually need to pay all my bills my car note my rent my uh, how much money do i actually need monthly to spend to take all my stuff how much money do i need to live comfortably how much money do i need to actually be able to build up the savings and actually make uh, some, some, some good things happen in my life. I would look at that before you ever got out the military. I did a bad job of it. Did a very bad job of, of financially planning my future. Not a whole lot of people are really good at it, but it is it. financially plan what you plan on doing for your future. Cause there's a very likely, you may not have a job that GI bill that you, that says $1,300 in stipend. You know, that actually still, you still got to pay for your books. <laughs> you, still, you know, you still, you still got to buy groceries and gas and, and, right. and, you know, things. So it's like that 1300 sounds really, really good, but you also have to max out in school credit. So you're spending so much time at school, you're not able to work. And if you're at school full time and working part time, how much money is that? Cause that's probably going to be barely enough to pay what you need to get done. So yeah, for me, it transitioning out, financial plan, financial plan, financial plan. So how did um, um how did you, how go, did you go about you know creating this nonprofit? Um, you talked about you know some ha having some financial issues. How did um how did this all come about with uh, Make a Vet Sweat? Okay, so when it comes to financially, well, let's talk about how I even started it. When when I started Make a Vet Sweat, I, I, I first started Make a Vet Sweat because while at college and me just talking to people and, and meeting people and, you know, uh, you're telling, you know, I'm wearing an army backpack at school or I'm have my dog tags or an army t-shirt on, people knew that I was a vet. So they would come up to me and talk to me. Other veterans, would, it'd be like a calling. Like, hey, hey, what's up, man? How you doing? And we would somehow, some way, we would get to the conversation of how are you holding up? How are you holding up? And I, somehow, some way, we always got to that conversation, whether it was to me or me asking somebody else. Just checking on each other. Just checking on each other. I found oftentimes than not that most veterans were depressed. Most veterans felt like they lost a sense of purpose. And most veterans had lost a self, you know, a loss of self-confidence and self-esteem. So when they would ask me, because I did not display loss of self-confidence, I did not display loss of self-esteem, I did not display a loss of sense of purpose. Man, how are you? How are you like so cool and you know what's going on? What are you doing differently? Well, I was honest with everybody and I'd say, man, I work out every single day. And every single day, my, my first achievement is I woke up early, I worked out, and I accomplished the first thing of the day was getting out of my bed, working out. And I would ask them, are you working out? Oftentimes what came out of their mouth, oh man, I got a bad knee. Oh man, my back. Oh man, I'm broke somehow, some way. And so that, that is stopping me from working out. There's always an excuse on why they're not able to get into fitness. And that excuse is oftentimes what's gonna stop them from great things. Because there's always going to be an obstacle in life. You might not, just kind of like what I was talking about, the hard way around it. You may not be able to take the easy approach to getting something done. You may have to go the long way around it. So when the first veteran told me, man, I got a bad knee. I can't work out. I've gained 30 pounds. My wife hates me. 
my life sucks, I'm fat and out of shape. What that told me was, you're making up an excuse on why you cannot better your life. You have a bad knee. That does not mean you cannot work out. There's other ways that you can work out. So what I did for that veteran, the very first veteran, I worked at a boxing gym. I was able to talk to the owner about getting this veteran a free gym membership to box. It changed his life. Now he doesn't have to run to get in shape, but he's able to punch a punching bag and get anger and aggression and, and feeling of self-doubt, feeling of depression, feeling of anxiety. He's able to put that into a punching bag. Right. He was like, Justin, man, thank you so much. And, and speaking of which, when I saw him one year later, he looked like a completely different person. At this point, one year later, he got into a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu uh, tournament. He had done a boxing tournament. He had legit changed his life around. Mo that's how I got started. That's how, that's how the idea came to mind. The second point to this was, how am I going to make this happen with no money? All right? Financially, I'm broke. I, 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 I uh, just got a job working at Orange Theory Fitness. Uh, I was doing super, super good. And so I was making about $55 an hour. And I was coaching about 20 classes a week. So I was making a decent amount of money, probably, really, probably about thirty-five to four thousand a month. And if you put that in yearly, probably close to about thirty-five to forty thousand a year. Decent. I wasn't doing great, but I was able to pay my bills. With what I had, um, I'll, I'll also say I don't spend much time at all watching TV. I also don't spend a whole lot of time doing things that don't uh, d does not improve my life. I, I spend in 24 hours a day, only sleeping probably about five to six to seven hours a night. I maximize what I do on my every single day. I don't sleep until noon, never. And and I oftentimes I also, I also don't go to sleep at eight o'clock p.m. I go to bed late and I wake up early, and that's my every day. The same thing I did in the barracks. Same way I lived in the army, it's the hard route, but that's how I, I maximize my day. And I spent as much time as I could studying other nonprofits like Wounded Warriors Project, other nonprofits, and I said, How are they doing it? I, to this day, have not got paid by my nonprofit. So I'm talking three years, three years of staying up late. Three years of spending my weekends at events selling T-shirts for $25. Three years of creating events, creating fundraisers, trying to make money for other veterans. And I have not paid myself. How do you get started in something like this? Legit, thinking of it like that. I'm going to put in an investment and I'm going to call it sweat equity. I'm going to put hours into my own operation. I'm not going to see money. We're not going to see money. I have to create money. There's an obstacle. I got to go figure out how to get around this obstacle to create money in order to help out veterans. If I can create enough money, then maybe one day I'll be able to pay myself. But legit, getting into this nonprofit was me watching YouTube, me Googling, and me studying other nonprofits. And I did read a book. I did read Nonprofits for Dummies. And I did skip a lot of chapters, but I did focus on the chapters that were going to help me start and create my nonprofit. I didn't have a mentor. I just kind of did it all, just maximizing my time. Justin, man, that's uh, excellent points right there. If, uh, if you guys are listening to this right now, or if, if you guys listen to it later, uh, you know, just to go back to what Justin was talking about, just make use of what you have, make use of the day that you're given, right? Um, a lot of people, when they, they set their alarm, they have, you know, they have the, that snooze button. Um, I like to tell myself is like, if you hit that snooze button, you try to go back to wet, bed, you're, waste, you're just wasting more time that you're given, right? Oh, yeah. um, as, soon as, as soon as your alarm goes off, you try to get up and try to make use of your day. Um, plan ahead the night before what you're planning to accomplish, whether that be with your fitness, your business, uh, your nonprofit. 
And if there's any anything that you're passionate about doing, like what Justin is with his uh, nonprofit, you go research it. You use the tools that you have right now, Google, YouTube, like uh, Justin was saying. And if you guys and look up other uh, nonprofit foundations, for, in his case, um, and do your research and see how you can improve and uh, better your uh, your business or your nonprofit. Um, so, Justin, that's excellent points right there. I'll tell you right now, you could talk so much about what you just said right there, and that could be a full podcast alone. Yeah. Because <laughs> and, 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 and a lot of people who are in fitness can agree with body build. If you're a personal trainer, we all, when maybe if you're just a listener, maybe, maybe you know somebody bodybuilding, maybe you've done this, but you, you just got off a competition or you just posted a picture of you uh, with your shirt off or your abs are hitting or you just got it left the gym. You posted a video uh, and your best friend or your family member or somebody says, hey, man, you look awesome. What's your. Hey, you should. How are you getting at? Well, how do you can you create me a workout? Now, this is the problem that I see with that. They have the right idea to find a mentor. The right idea to ask somebody who knows. But what nobody does before they see me and what I. Oh, bro, have you to research it? Have you taken the time out of your own day? To find you're about to ask me right now. Yep. Because the truth is, if you are not willing to put skin in the game, if you are not willing to put an investment of time into yourself first, I'm not sure that I can do it for you. Because what that ultimately is telling me is Justin, I want what you have with none of the with none of the time that you took to get it. And that's to me that's important and i'm first man let me go ask somebody who, and i felt like i kind of got shot because people say can i and they won't follow the i will have wasted time to you how successful and when you found out what it took for me to be successful, you decided not to do it. So I just wasted my time, and my time is a little bit more valuable than, than spending it, you know, talking to them about this. So, so off the top, if you are not willing to be resourceful and use the ultimate resource, which is the internet, free information, you legit, yeah. legit, go to your Google box, how do I get abs? It's all you, you just got to read trial and error. <laughs> it's right there. I, you could go right on Google right now and say, how do I start a nonprofit? Funny thing. That's exactly where I started. That question led me to another question, led me to another question. I wrote a whole bunch of stuff down, which led me to be able to piece together a business plan, which allowed me to piece together a vision, which allowed me to take a look at my expenses to see if this actually works for me. Now, once when I had that, once I had that, then I was able to reach out and say, hey, man, I got this business plan. I know you run nonprofits. Can you take a look at it for me? And maybe we can go over it and maybe you can help me come up with a good. Now, that right there is a better question. Then, hey, dude, can you show me how you got your nonprofit started? You're telling me that I can potentially be wasting my time one to two to three hours talking to you about giving you a whole layout and blueprint on how to be successful. Instead, I want you to lay out your blueprint on how you want to be successful. And me and you can talk about my experiences and how we can maximize what you already put together. We have so many free resources out there. Score. Uh, Chamber of Commerce, uh, your local community college, 
so many research books at the library, books at, at Barnes and Nobles, the internet, so many resources. But the first thing people always want to do is look right at that trainer and say, hey, man, how did you get your abs? You're my friend. How'd you get your abs? Well, you know, dude, after this eighth or ninth or tenth or twelfth or thirteenth or one hundredth person, I, how, I, I cannot devote one hour to every single person that has an idea that today they want to get abs because they realize it's June and they have a pool party in three weeks. Yeah, time is precious, guys. I mean, look, look, look it up. I mean, Google's right there. Dude, dude, we can talk about all the things in the world that you can invest in that you'll get money back on. One thing you will never get money back on is your time. Yeah. Man, I, man, if you, you know, time is so valuable. It's so valuable. I, I almost would tell somebody, if you want one hour for me, you got to pay me for it. My time right now is going to worth $50. You got $50 you want to pay for? Otherwise, I'm not going to tell you about how to get your abs. I'm not going to tell you what I did to get my nonprofit started. Because, man, I, you know, and, and time, where there's time spent on my business, with his time on my personal working out for my own personal self, or his time spending with my daughter. Time is valuable. And you have That's to take, you, you have to know that within yourself to say, my time is valuable. I need to get my ass out of bed and make worth of this time. At some point in time, we're gonna die. And if yeah. you spend time in the military, that, that is a realization. At some point in time, you had to write your will. At some point in time, you had to say, well, yeah, if I die, 20 percent goes to my, you know, my family members. We all do that in the military. That's a part of the end process. So death is a real thing. We have to take. We have to take accountability for the fact that we're going to die and accountability for every minute that you're spending on this earth. If you can impact somebody's life in a the positive, then, then you're then dude, you're maximizing what you want to do. So that's yeah, that's where I'm at. Sorry to go on a tangent, big guy. <laughs> oh, man. Awesome, brother. Excellent points, man. I'm, Just, I'm really passionate, man. Yeah, I, I see that. And I appreciate that, brother. So uh, just to go back into um, talking about your nonprofit, you said you've been going for what, three years, you said? Yes. So um, what's been, I guess, the worst moment um, since starting Make a Vet Sweat and how did you overcome that moment? Ooh. The worst moment that I had from starting my nonprofit, the very first year, going into my second year, um, I had a lot of veterans lined up to join gym memberships. And I'm like, man, I got to figure out how to pay for it. So I came up with the first bodybuilding Mavs Trading Classic. Uh, and it was in 2016. And the reason why that was my worst, worst experience is I had set a date, I had got a venue, but I never signed a contract. It was a verbal agreement. The, there was also a nonprofit venue who's looking to make money. It was my very first year. They didn't have any faith in what I had, or I didn't have a whole lot of legitimacy either. They did a verbal contract with me that I can have a date July 16th in Austin, Texas. And six weeks before that event, so about mid-June, they contacted me via text and said, hey, uh, the venue got bought out by somebody else. We have no availability on July 16th. We have no availability for any days in July and no availability for August. Oh. I read that text message and said, what the fuck? <laughs> like I like at this point in time, dude, I had printed out posters. I had printed out flyers. I had Facebook events. I had people, competitors, competitors paying and registering to compete in my show. Six weeks before, I have to change it. So what did I do to overcome it? Well, at first I was frantic and, and I was panicking. And I called a whole bunch of places because I wanted to keep that July 16th date. I, with, with six weeks time, I could not find a venue space that would allow me to do it. So I take a step back and I talk to my support system. It's so important to have a support system. And that's another great conversation to have. 
My support system so happened to be my brother, who is a Austin Police Department officer. He's in a police force. And my sister-in-law, his wife, who has a master's degree in, in cultural activities. And she works for a high school as a, as a high school counselor for seniors. Neither one of them know anything about nonprofits. Neither one of them have put together events. So neither one of them have experience in what I was looking for. But I decided to talk to them because I was stressed and I needed some other people with ideas. So I lay out all everything that I've done. I'm like, guys, I'm stressed out. I'm panicking. I mean, I'm damn near in tears. Damn near in tears. because I feel like I'm going to fail. My brother says, Justin. Have you thought about having outside of Austin? And at first I was like, yeah, yeah. I mean, I thought about it, but, it, but the truth is, no, I, I really didn't think about it. So then I sat down and I was like, well, let me think about that. And what I saw was, number one, the obstacle, and, I, and this is going to be a key point throughout this entire conversation. The obstacle is I don't have a venue for July 16th. How do I get around my obstacle and make it a success? I pushed the event back two weeks to allow me a little bit more time to market and change my marketing strategy. I changed my entire marketing strategy and I had an event in between Austin and the nearest army base, which is Fort Hood, Texas. So right in Temple, Right in between Austin and Fort Hood is one hour out of Austin and it's 45 minutes from Fort Hood. I was able to host my charity event. The things that happened, number one, the venue was cheaper because it was outside of the city. I had a huge attendance because it was veteran or orientated and I made it free for veterans. So I was able to market it on Fort Hood Army Base. I took what could have been a disaster for my first charity event and i was able to raise twenty five thousand dollars on my first oh, event it's awesome brother you you take an obstacle it's okay to get frustrated especially in the very beginning when you're not used to being a problem solver which is what an entrepreneur at the end of the day is especially running a nonprofit. there's a problem to solve it when you're not used to being a problem solver those first problems are just going to be painful. So leaning on your support system. I mean, they don't necessarily have to be event planners. I mean, you know, theoretically, that's who you want to talk to. That's who you want to be a mentor. But people who are just successful at life, thinkers, real problem solvers, they can help you get around it because we're going to be so used to seeing things like this that when you have somebody else from a different perspective, they can open it up okay. and say, Dude, you're so right. right. You're so right. I could change my flyer, throw more military background on there, call it free for, for all military active, promote it at a military base, be in a location that's in between Austin, the big city, and Fort Hood, which is a big army base. And I can get people to meet in the middle. Maybe not everybody's going to come, but there's a lot of people that will come. Take an obstacle. Don't just stress over the first way to get around it. Look at other ways to get around it. Again, in the Army, just referencing back to my Army days, we oftentimes went from A down to Z, down to X, down to Y, down to W to get to A or get to, to get to B. You're like, dude, that's a long way to get around it. But hell, we were successful. So talking about your, you know, we're talking about that worst moment. Would you say the end result was the best moment so far or what's, what's been the best moment and yeah. make this? Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, I'll, I'll, the end result was not the best moment at that point in time. It was the best moment to be able to raise $25,000 to be able to raise 150 vet or help out 150 veterans uh, through, throughout the state uh, get gym memberships that at the moment that was the best uh the, the best, the best moment of, of, of my time, uh, working with the nonprofit, but, uh, hindsight right now, the best moment of working for my nonprofit, uh, has been the testimonies last year, 
I, I did my first gala. So now I hold bodybuilding competitions and I hold a military gala. And I do that August 4th here in Austin. Uh, at that gala, it's really kind of a military ball. I allow key speakers to come and speak. One particular person I had speak uh, was a veteran that I helped uh, get gym membership. And his testimony blew me away, man. It blew me away. Uh, hearing him tell me that I legit saved his life. What we hate hearing as veterans is that a veteran committed suicide, man. You know, I, you know, I, I, I hate hearing uh, a veteran got blown up by an IED. I hate hearing somebody got their life taken in war. Uh, but it, well, we, we pretty much voluntarily sign up knowing that I may die or I may not die. We do not volunteer for the after effects of transitioning out of the military, coming back from war. We don't even plan for it. We think about, man, my buddy might die if we go overseas. Man, I, I might die if I go overseas. We even prepare our families for it. But nobody's prepared for a transition coming back. So to be able to say that this guy came back and, and was legit at the, at, the, at the bottom of their life and to say, Man, getting into Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, getting me to start boxing and work my stretch, channel my stress in a different way, change their life. I mean, if, if all I do in my lifetime save one person's life, I've done that. That's awesome. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's all about one, right? Can I save one person? If I can save one person, man, I mean, what more can you ask for? Right. It's a testament to what you guys are doing over there, man. So, again, shout out to you guys and make a best sweat. Um, I, got a co I got a comment here with uh, Chad Davenport. It says, uh, awesome company. Met them at Vet Fest last fall. Chad, uh, thanks for watching and thanks for the, sh uh, the comment. Hey, thank you, Chad. Appreciate that. All right, Justin. Uh, so for those who might be looking to start their own uh, nonprofit. What's uh, what's one advice that you can give them, and give us an internet resource that they can use? Um, if you're looking to start a nonprofit, it is important for you to know that there is no money in in nonprofits. There's one up closer to that one million dollar a year annually mark. Um, the way that fundraise, uh, the way that nonprofits work, uh, they're based on the community. So the community, uh, it helps you donate, but they also are able to see your taxes. So if you raised $10,000 in one year and you paid yourself, that it's, it comes out in taxes. It comes out in taxes. You have, you, it, there's no way around it. It comes out in taxes. So when you push that information out, they're going to see it. So there's no, it's not possible for you to justify $10,000 you receiving any type of salary, right? Uh, that's going to go to operational costs and it's going to go to helping out whatever you're servicing. Uh, so if you are starting a nonprofit, financial planning is important. Um, doing all your research or research on, 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 on all that stuff is extremely important. Um, and as far as a resource, a resource to go to online, um, I, I, I personally would look at what community colleges you have in the area and if they have a nonprofit division or program or courses at that, uh, at that community college, if they do, I would say, find a mentor, do your research, find a mentor, sit down and, 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 and talk it all the way out. Make sure that you're going to make this commitment. Uh, nonprofit, it just simply is not easy work. Uh, your payment is off the reward of saving one person's life and doing it every single day. I'm, every day I want to help one person save one person's life. So uh, if you're looking at starting a nonprofit, go into it with the mentality of I, I have to figure it out. And then if you guys are here listening to this right now, um, you know, thinking about doing that, and I'm sure Justin can – can answer any of your questions regards to uh, nonprofit as well. If you guys have, um, you know, have any ideas in doing doing that. Um, 
All right. Yes, so, I'm always uh, available. Awesome, brother. All right, brother. So we come to the last portion of the uh, the interview here. Uh, so this is where I ask our guests the five fitness facts. Um, are you ready, Justin? <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> All right, brother. Uh, so first question is, what's your favorite workout? My favorite workout, number one, I like to lift heavy weights. I'm a big fan of German volume training because I'm trying to gain and get big and I like to work legs. So I like to do 10 sets of 10 reps of the heaviest weight that I can do that I possibly can do. And my favorite workouts are leg day workouts where they're miserable, they're grueling. That's my favorite overall workout. Awesome, brother. So talking about your favorite workout, what's your least favorite workout? My least favorite workout is the one that I did not do. <laughs> Good answer. All right, next question. If you had to choose one person you could train with, who would it be and why? Dude, I train with The Rock. I train with Dwayne Johnson all day, every day. Number one, he's a beast. Um, but number two, he has the type of personality. Um, I'm, I'm a firm believer of surrounding yourself with people that do better than you. So he has the personality that I feel like if I was able to spend an hour with him every day, I would grow as a person. You know, so it'd completely be The Rock. I'd work out with him all day. Great. Great answer. Great motivator too. Yes. Rec recommend a book for our listeners to read. Ooh, the obstacle is the way. That was kind of the theme of this conversation I felt like today with you guys. And it's been the theme of my life. And it's my, been my biggest takeaway from the army is that the obstacle is the way. Whatever way you see provides the biggest obstacle, pull up your britches, you know, pull up those uh, sleeves, and get your arms dirty because that's the way you got to go get to work solve the problem get around that obstacle and uh next question tell us your favorite quote and why okay my favorite quote is uh i don't remember who this well i kind of have two favorite quotes uh but my absolute favorite quote is surround yourself with people who work harder than you do not have a list of friends that are that have so much availability. I think that people with availability typically are not the type of people I want to be around. Uh, when it comes to dating, I don't want to date a girl who's super available. My grandfather always told me that the best people to have are the busy people. Why are they the best people to have? Because they're always doing something. So if you need to get something done, you have people who are doers. Doers get stuff done. People who do not do, they have excuses. Do you want to get stuff done or do you want to get bombarded with excuses? Surround yourself with people that work as hard as you do. Make life easier. Excellent point, man. And uh, finally, our last question, where can our listeners uh, connect with you. Yes, please, please, please connect with me. Um, make a vet sweat is my nonprofit. You can go to make a vet sweat.org and learn a lot about my nonprofit. If you're a veteran and you want to get a gym membership, you can fill out the application. If you work for a gym or you're a trainer and you want to support my nonprofit, go to make a vet sweat.org. And that is where you'll find out how to get a little bit more involved. But you can connect with me on all social medias except for Twitter. I don't know what it is about Twitter, but I just don't understand Twitter. I, I, <laughs> I may have had an account years ago, but Twitter is one of those things. You either it's like, it's like Apple and, and Android phone. <laughs> you either love Apple or you don't have Apple and you have Android. You either love Twitter or you just don't have it whatsoever. So I'm not on Twitter, but I am on Instagram at Make a Vet Sweat. Um, I am also on Facebook at Make a Vet Sweat. Uh, and you can always reach out to me and get a hold of me at my website, makeavetsweat.org. Any uh, special events coming up for Make a Vet Sweat? Yes, my big, big event is the uh, is my Mavs Charity Classic and Gala, which is uh, military ball. So if you are in Austin, Texas, 
on August 4th. Uh, that will be my fit expo. That would be bodybuilding and uh, powerlifting. Uh, if you uh, if you like a little bit more like a military ball, uh, that evening is going to be our gala. Again, if you go to makeavetsweat.org, you'll find all information on how to get tickets, uh, how to um, how to show up, how to support, or even how to get brand recognition at uh, our events. Awesome, brother. Well, Justin, I want to thank you once again for coming on for this week's uh, interview. Uh, commend you for your, you know what you're doing with your nonprofit organization, and um, make sure you guys support Justin. Uh, check him out on Facebook and on Instagram at at Make of That Sweat. Uh, one final question for me, Justin, and that is, what can I do to help you? Man, you're doing it right now. You provided me a platform to let more people know about what my nonprofit is, where you can find out about my nonprofit, and how I can help one person out each day. Awesome, brother. So thank you. Well, thank you, and uh, thank you for what you're doing for the uh, the veteran community. All right, guys, that's, that's our episode for this week. Thank you guys for tuning in, and uh, we'll see you guys next week. See you guys. Peace.